Uh, okay, we need to keep moving. Uh, I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit. We're going to go over chapter 11, and then Shelly is going to jump in and do chapter 13. Uh, I don't think it'll be as professional as this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she is, she is going to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to have her do it. Oh, what about snow? I almost... That was last week. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't here. Yeah. And it, I heard, it, was, I heard it, was, it was a great chapter. I heard it was very uh, good. Okay, I believe that. No, you know, no. can, can, I, can I just say something? Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for letting me do that. Joe, thank you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and second, second of all, uh, I want to thank you and Shelly for opening up your homes mm -hmm. here. You your bet. Home. And, yeah. And it was just, I mean, we, we really had a good time. I think the, um, there was a lot of good interaction and I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's awesome. We got a great group here. We yeah. really do. We do. Yeah, I'm thinking when we get that room, putting the chairs in a circle and um, making it a little more interactive and um, doing it a little bit different. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um, but let's keep let's keep moving on. Uh, got a lot to this is 40, 48 verses. Oh, uh, I forgot. Fifty seven. Um, so I'm gonna go fast, uh, but uh, and if we don't make it, Shelley can get it next time, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to, I wanted to have them both done. I just have been so busy at work. I, I we we're dealing with some issues this week, and um, I just didn't have time. So, but I did want to go over this. It's so cool. Um, and this is uh, the chapter about Lazarus. And it says, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town uh, of Mary and her sister Martha. And we know all know the story of Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, um, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, uh, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but... For the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So, Jesus knew, of course, and uh, he said the sickness is not unto death. Yet, Lazarus does die. So, he's talking about um, uh, the physical death, but you'll notice that Jesus calls it sleep. And um, brings Lazarus back to life. So, it's not unto a permanent death, physical mm -hmm. death. Uh, so this is the same Mary that washed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. Um, it's the same too uh, where the one was serving uh, and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha was mad because mm -hmm. Mary wasn't helping her. Uh, and uh, Jesus says it's not a sickness unto death. And, um, and you know what? Anything, nothing that we have is really a sickness unto death because we've already died. We've already died with Christ and we'll live with him. Um, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Isn't that weird? He loved them. So he didn't, he didn't go real fast. He, he stayed there. Um, I find that interesting. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days. He, 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 didn't, he wasn't in a hurry because he knew he knew, he knew what was going on. Uh, death is not final when it, with, with Jesus. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. So after a couple of days, he said, now let's go. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you and you're going there again. So now they're going, why would he even go there? They probably figured he stayed because he was scared to go back there because they tried to stone him. But Jesus loved Lazarus and his sisters. Uh, but because of love, he stayed. And I find that very interesting. But it was really so that he could glorify God in front of all these mourners that were going to be there. So uh, he waited the two days. And Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? This is the answer to the question, Are you sure you want to go back there where they wanted to stone you. And he goes, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that, 
He said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. So, Jesus is saying there's something spiritual going on here. If we walk in the light, we don't stumble. But if we walk in the darkness, we stumble. And he's trying to show them that he is the light. That uh, this is a, a spiritual thing. So he says, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go to wake him up. So Lazarus was dead, but Jesus said that he's sleeping. Uh, these are both spiritual and physical statements. So they, they, you do stumble if you're walking in the dark and there's a rock in front of you or whatever. But it's also uh, spiritual. So Jesus is speaking in both natural terms and heavenly terms at the same time. And he does this a lot in this chapter. You'll, you'll see a couple of things here. Jesus is trying to say that people do not understand his ministry. They don't really recognize who he is. And that's why he said, are you sure you want to go there? Um, and he, he said, you have light. We have light. And, uh, and uh, they don't. So the people who are trying to stone him, they don't have the light. They stumble. But his disciples and him, they don't stumble because they have light. So his disciples said, Lord, if Lazarus sleeps, he will get well. Because Jesus said he, he sleeps. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. So they're getting spiritual mixed up with natural. Okay? And rightly so, because Jesus speaks in, bo in both terms spiritual and natural. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Uh, so he's telling them so that they understand in the natural, he's dead. But we have to understand that what's natural for us is n not natural for Jesus. He, he is the ruler of life and death. He, that's why he can walk on the water. That's why. So for him, sleep or death are, they're both the same thing because he's the resurrection. So they get mixed up, but Jesus is not mixed up. I'm glad for your sakes that I was uh, not there, that you may believe. So he's saying, I'm glad I didn't go there because I want you to believe. Nevertheless, let's go to him. And then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. So he thinks that that uh, there, Jesus is talking about death here, that Lazarus is dead. And then Thomas says, let's go because they're going to stone him and they're going to stone us. But you know what? In a way, they do need to die with Christ. Just like we all have died with Christ. Um, Jesus will wake Lazarus. Uh, we do need to die with Christ so that we might live. So when Thomas says, let us go that we may die with him, it's a great statement. It has both yeah. spiritual and physical meaning. Um, Romans 6, 7 says, For he who has died <clears throat> has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So, we, di we have died already um, because we've given our life to Christ. We've, we've died with him and we're raised in newness of life. And again, that's what this is, is both natural and supernatural. Uh, verse 17, when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. So Lazarus had been in there for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Um, so Bethany is the city that he was headed to, but he hadn't gotten there yet. And uh, a lot of the Jews uh, were with the women um, comforting them. So he'd been in the tomb for four days, and there's a lot of people there. So, and that's exactly what Jesus wanted, because he's, he's about to glorify God. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Um, Mary's always sitting. <laughs> she's the one that sat at the feet of Jesus, now she's sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Now notice what uh, Martha does here. She puts Jesus in the past. She says, if you'd have been here in the past, four days ago, Lazarus wouldn't have died. So, I mean, Jesus is there right now, mm -hmm. right? 
But what's Martha doing? She's thinking about, well, oh, if Jesus, if only you'd have been here. And she puts him in the past. Now, watch this. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now look what Martha does. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now what does she do? She puts Jesus in the future. She goes, I know that in the resurrection, you'll raise him up from the dead. So, you weren't here four days ago. You could have healed Lazarus. And now, it's like, I know he'll rise again. Uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So, Martha here puts Jesus in the future. Before she put him in the past. But Jesus is in the now. I am. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is always here right now at this moment. We don't have to worry about the future. We don't have to worry about the past because he is here with us right now. I am the resurrection. So he's, he's telling her, I am the healer. I am the resurrection. It's now. Jesus is right now in the, very, <clears throat> in the present. So whoever believes will not die. Beautiful. Whoever believes in me shall never die. Isn't that awesome? And again, we do experience physical death, but he's talking that we have life eternal with him. Physical death is not death. At, at the end of the day, you have to look at physical death as that. Uh, if you're a Christian, it's not death. It's, it's just, you just uh, uh, are moving to the next thing. So, I love the way that Jesus does that. He, he wove it in with sleep, and he, he did not think of it as death. Um, so, she said to him, Yes, Lord, <clears throat> I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who's come into the world. And when she said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and went to him. So, Martha tells Mary... Jesus wants you. Um, so Martha believed. She knows that Jesus can handle this. And um, what does she do? She goes and tells Mary. Which is what we should be. When God reveals something to us, we need to be telling people. This is, this is what God showed me. This is, uh, uh, we need to be very vocal about it. Now, uh, Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the the place where Martha met him. So Jesus wasn't in town yet, but he had stopped where uh, Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her saying, she's going to the tomb to weep there. So Mary leaves her mourning to go to Jesus. And rightly so. That, that was a good move. And it, uh, she rose up quickly. She As soon as she heard that Jesus wanted her. She was up and out. And uh, the uh, people who were with her thought, oh, she's, she's going to the tomb. Mm -hmm. So when Mary came near G where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She says the same thing. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. It, it bothered Jesus, that, the weeping. It wasn't their sadness, it, it's death. Um, it, uh, death is an enemy. And it, it, he, it says he groaned in his spirit. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. I love this. Um, he, Jesus knew where they laid him. But he asked the people, where have you laid him? Because he wanted them to be there when he called him out of that tomb. So uh, Jesus was touched when he saw the people weeping. And um, because death is not natural. It, 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 it should not be. Jesus did not need to know where Jesus was, but he wanted the people to be there. So when they said, come, we'll show you. Uh, that's exactly what he wanted. And then it says, Jesus wept. And that, I guess that's the shortest I hear. That's just, I didn't really fact check it. But I've heard that's the shortest verse in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, so here we see that Jesus wept. Um, he, he, uh, and the Jews said, see how he loved him. Um, so they knew that there was love there, but Jesus wept because death is an enemy. 
And uh, Jesus loves us all like he loved Lazarus. Um, Jesus hated death and what it does to human beings. So we need to know, it's, they say, see how he loved him. But he loves everyone just like he, he loved Lazarus. Some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again groaned in himself. See, they're, they don't get it. And he's, he's groaning in himself like they just don't really know who I am. There is no death in me. I am the resurrection. Um, they just they don't get it. Uh, so, uh, again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb, and it was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. I, I love that verse take away the stone because stone always represents the law mm -hmm. and uh because the law was written on stone mm -hmm. and when he says take away the stone mm -hmm. it's remove the law because you're about to see the grace mm -hmm. you're about to see resurrection martha the sister of him who was dead said to him lord by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days so uh he'd been there for a while it, it was just they, they felt like it was impossible for Jesus to raise him from the dead because of the decay. But uh, his body's about to be restored. But I love that message, take away the stone. Um, do you remember when uh, the two women were going to Jesus' tomb and they were wondering who would roll the stone away? And it's Jesus who rolls the stone away. He's the one who takes... We are condemned by the law. And he has taken that stone out of the way so that we can experience his grace mm -hmm. and he took our punishment mm -hmm. so we take away the stone and behind the stone what is there a stench the stench of death the the law is death um the bible says for if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so much so that the children of israel could not uh look steadily at the face of moses because uh he, uh, his, his face was glowing and they put a cloth over him. But it says in Corinthians, the ministry of death written and engraved on stones. And so behind the stone is death. But with Christ, there's resurrection. So I, I find a nice parallel there. Verse 40, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God? Um, so... They're, they're starting to not believe, but he's, he's saying, I, I told you, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. Then he took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And... He who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. He came out of that stone was rolled away. There's a stench, but he comes out bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And what Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go because he's alive. He's no longer dead. He's, he's now alive. And so if only we would believe that he is here now, he's not the Jesus of the past. He's not the Jesus that will do something in the future that you wished he would have done in the past, but he is here right now. He is the I am, and he has just performed a miracle, and it's loose him and let him go. And that's, the law keeps, the law brings bondage, but Christ brings freedom. Take away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. That's, I love that, take away the stone, that they may believe. So loose him and let him go. Stones removed. The, the bondage is, is removed and Lazarus is raised from the dead. Mm. Then many of the Jews, and let me tell you something, that is a, as much a real story as it is a spiritual story that tells us who Christ is. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. So now they all looked at it and they went, oh my gosh, this, and that was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Now, I don't know if they did that out of spite or if they were just going to the...
Pharisees to cause problems or if they were going there to say, hey, yeah. you need to check this guy out because he just raised somebody from the dead who was dead for four days. Um, it has to be the Son of God, right? Mm -hmm. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees, now look what they do. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs. So they recognize that he's doing this stuff but it, then they go, if we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. Yes, leave him alone. And the Romans will come and take away both our place, the Pharisees' place, and what they do, and nation. So they were worried that Jesus was going to interrupt the system that they had. And they didn't want it interrupted. Um, but many of the Jews believed. And the Pharisees, they were fearful <coughs> that their life would be ruined. If, if we just let Jesus work and get out of the way, everyone will believe. Mm. We just need to speak Christ and what he's doing. Um, so the Pharisees are trying to plot and figure out how to get rid of this guy because they're messing up what they do. And they think that he's going to be the, the death of the nation. But they don't realize <coughs> that he's the life of that nation. Um, verse 49. One of them, Caiaphas, being the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. He's talking to the other Pharisees. He's the high priest. Nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not the whole nation should perish. So he's saying, we need Jesus to die so that, this, that it doesn't interrupt our nation or what we're doing. And Caiaphas, he's speaking the word because Jesus is the one man mm -hmm. who will die not only for their nation, but for the entire world. Caiaphas speaks the word without even knowing it. He doesn't even realize what he's saying. Mm -hmm. One man should die for the people. Yeah. And that is a prophecy. And John tells us in the next verse... Now, this he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. Hmm. So it, he was prophesying without even realizing what he was saying. And not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. So not only is he dying for that nation, but for everyone. So Caiaphas did not know what he was saying, that Jesus would die for the nation and that Jesus would die for the world. Very interesting. This whole chapter has a duality to it to where something that is uh, natural and physical represents something that which is spiritual. And even Caiaphas spoke in the natural, but he didn't realize that what he was saying was a prophecy that represented the spiritual. So verse 53 then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. So that was it. He's died. He's got to go. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there to the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples. So Jesus quit being out in the open so much. He's still got some things that he needs to do, and uh, he doesn't want to have to deal with that. So uh, Jesus went where they would not go. And Jesus no longer walked openly. Um, when there's resistance like that, sometimes it can hinder what God is doing. You okay? All right. Uh, we need to discern when we speak and when to stay silent. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus didn't walk openly after that. You have to be careful. Some people are out there to just trap you. Verse 55. Uh, the Passover of the Jews was near... And many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think? That he will not come to the feast? So they're talking about Jesus. You think he'll come? I don't know. I hope he comes. I, uh, so they're, I mean, he was, talk, I'm sure, the talk of the town. Uh, now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it that they might seize him. So... They're ready to capture him. They're upset with him. He's messing up what they're doing. Here he just rose somebody. He just uh, raised somebody from the dead who was dead for four days. 
Um, the people were all talking about Jesus. What a great thing. I wish today they were all talking about Jesus. Um, the word was out so that the Pharisees could seize him. So they were just looking for someone to tell the Pharisees, hey, he's over here. Um, so now we're up to our discussion questions. And uh, um, we've got a little bit of time. So what do you think was going through Lazarus' mind when they unwrapped him from the grave clothes? I always wondered why they not put a passage in there for what these would say. Always wondered that. Yeah. And, and I think always say, why don't they have a verse in there and what he would say? <laughs> Can you imagine? I. <laughs> he was probably like, Jesus, I was fine. Why did you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You didn't really want to come back. I mean, bring me back. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Uh, interesting though, right? Mm -hmm. Um, why did Jesus resurrect Lazarus? To give God glory. To the the Son of God. So established to let the people see what God could do and that they would believe. And, yeah. be, and, and many did. To give God glory. To give God glory. Yeah. yeah, because they didn't really know. Yeah. They, did, like they, they knew that there would be a Messiah, but they didn't really know what he would do in the physical world, you know what I mean? And right. It's like, but here, this is like really happening. It uh, it was also to show that Jesus was the resurrection. Was he was saying, he, everything he did to represent him. I'm the light of the world. He yep. the blind. I'm the resurrection, the life. He resurrects Lazarus. Yeah. You know, all of that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what caused some of the Jews to still not believe in Jesus even after he raised Lazarus from the dead? A bondage and a bondage to the Pharisees, and they were, you know, I think that I think that's why they were just in in bondage. And well, he he told that one guy. He said even if when they said you know to, um, go tell my brothers, mm -hmm. he said. Even if I, even if I, you know, you were, they, they saw the dead raised, and you say they wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. Your brothers aren't gonna believe. Right. Some people just aren't gonna believe. Yeah. Okay. They were. I was, I was saying it. It talks about the fact that they were so concerned about their own, their own glory, their mm -hmm. own. Yeah. Uh, status. Status. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, the yeah, their own status in the world that it was more important for them yeah. to, to keep their status than to. Because that's he's destroying my status. He's, yeah. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm gonna go down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, in what ways can we show people that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? How can we show that? By rising every time we fall. Mm hmm Yes, that's good. Our testimony, yes. how we were lost and now we're found, it's mm -hmm. really uh, like dying and coming back to life. You can just say what he has done and yeah. what he does. Yeah. yeah. You know, what I meant before about bondage was what he said. You know, if you were in that bondage where you were like, just thinking about, okay, that was a good answer. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, what was Jesus resurrected what what has Jesus resurrected in your own life that was once dead? His love for us and for everybody, and He first loved us, and uh, and also hope, mm -hmm. every everything. And He's always here. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's always here. Yeah. He never leaves us or forsakes us. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and. I don't know if that was, and in a way it wasn't like that it was dead, but it just never, it maybe didn't come al come alive at different times, and, and it just, I think just, just, he is, he is, he is alive. Yeah. You know, he is alive. We can believe in him and trust in him. Yeah. That's, you know, what, and what was dead was that, I know for me, being brought up in, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, mm -hmm. you can't do that, you can mm. No. Yeah. So he is the I am. The, he's the he's the God of right now. Um, yeah. The the thing I liked about this chapter is how Martha put him in the past. Like if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. And then 
Jesus said, your brother will live. And she said, oh, yeah, I know he'll live on the resurrection in, in, you know, in the future. So she put him in the past and in the future, but didn't realize he's right there, right now. He's, he's the I am, the God of now. 